Let me start this video off with a simple question. When you go to the movie theater or watch a movie on Netflix, what are you trying to achieve? Most of us see it as a means of relaxation and an avenue to experience a story that could be enticing, funny, or extraordinary. Let me ask you another question. What avenue are you going down when you search Netflix? I think sometimes it can do with the current state of your life or society. Luckily, we have a system developed for us to where we can find the film that we want exploring different genres. Most of us know the most popularized ones. Adventure, comedy, thriller. But today we are going to explore one that takes the present situation of our world and puts it into the future. This genre is science fiction. Star Wars, Venom, and Ex Machina are some of the most popular titles we have seen as of late. But the history of sci-fi spans back thousands of years. Let me give you a brief recap so you can have a good idea of how it has changed over the years. The beginning of science fiction goes a lot further back than we expect, taking us back to the second century with Greek writer Lucian, who created True History, who took us on a voyage to space to explore and communicate with the extraterrestrial. In the 8th century, 1001 Nights began to focus more on the potential of the fusion of organisms and technology with the mechanical flying horse that would take man across the universe. But rather than these being foreseeable, these were more as fairy tales and fables. Let us fast forward now to the early 19th century. We see a shift from romanticism to realism, which starts with science fiction pioneer Mary Wollstonecraft Shelley, who reignited the science fiction genre with a famous novel, Frankenstein. This marks the first iteration of the monster figure into science fiction, and a character still being used in modern day cinema with numerous see, movies see about the story of dozens One of years. Frankenstein is still seen as a warning Please across the expansion of science without a moral context. This also marked the beginning of the use of electricity, which was one of the numerous technological advancements that happened in the 1800s. Shelley since then has coined what the term as, quote, mother of science fiction. In this time period, two pioneers for science fiction, H.G. Wells and Jules Verne, began to make their mark with stories that became more adventurous with H.G. Wells' The Time Machine, which integrated time machines for the first time and gives off the hypothesis that the future may not be what we envision. And Verne, excelling not only on science fiction, but also sci-fi opera and romance. Over the next 100 years, a new genre was born where the simple merging of science and fiction. And it wouldn't take long to see that though this is fiction at the time, it may not be fiction for long. During this shift, we see a world that underwent a sensationalist period, where stories were sold for chump change, and eventually the emergence of pulp magazines hit the scene. Authors were there to sell as much as possible, as quickly as possible, in a cheap industry. Those stories that succeeded tended to be one of the four mega publications, Argosy, Blue Book, Short Stories, and Adventure. But editor Hugo Gernsbeck saw the potential and created amazing stories. The implications were the same as the other publishers, but it took off when Gernsbeck created an open forum for fans to enter their own sci-fi stories, which led to the uprising of pulp sci-fi with the release of the first movie of its genre, Metropolis. In the 1930s, hard science fiction was founded, which can be defined as the truest sense of science fiction. Famous editor John W. Campbell took the publication Astounding Stories and turned it into Astounding Science Fiction, and brought in famous authors Isaac Asimov, Arthur C. Clarke, Robert A. Heinlein, and others. During this time, we experienced a world full of turmoil with World War II and the early risings of the Soviet Union and communism. Author George Orwell expressed his theory on communism in his 1940s novel, 1984. The story is set in a dystopian futuristic city of London inside the nation of Oceania, one of the three super states created after a global war where every human is surveyed and under the watchful eye of the party and the big brother, who is the controller of this totalitarian state. Orwell covers this fear of a potential totalitarian state that could form with the rise of communism, which inhibits censorship, surveillance, and technology that can create a stronghold that was resemblant to that of the USSR. This publication took off and created a major surge for hard science fiction and what we know now as the golden age of science fiction in the 50s. As science fiction was succeeding, so did science in general, and when rockets went up exploring the unknown of space, readers strayed away from pulp magazines. Though most publications died off, few authors remained in this new wave during the 1960s, which focused less on science fiction but rather explored the already established genre, which authors did in Michael Mormick's New Worlds. In this period, we see a golden age for sci-fi film with movies that revolve around alien invasion that were put on the big screen around the time of the first UFO sightings, which popularized movies like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. 
Created in 1956, it shared a story of paranoia toward the spread of harmful ideologies such as socialistic communism and McCarthyism in the 1950s. But its main theme was the alien dehumanization and takeover of an entire community by large seed pods that replicated and replaced human beings. And it told of the heroic struggle of one helpless but determined man of conscience, a small town doctor to vainly combat and quell the deadly and destructible threat. Going back to the space race of the 60s, we see a growing trend for space travel sci-fi films in this time, with the famous film 2001 Space Odyssey, which gives us a realistic depiction of space exploration and also famous films like Star Wars and Star Trek. When the travel of space went from being a dream to reality, authors and film creators needed to refine the science fiction genre. In the 80s came the subgenre that brought an advanced technological futuristic world that combined with the new wave subversiveness to what we know now as cyberpunk, which created famous films like Blade Runner. Blade Runner depicts a near-future urban dystopia where science and technology have progressed to a dangerous level alongside terrible environmental decline and societal collapse. The creation of Nexus 6 replicants is classic cyberpunk. The line between human and android is blurred. The genetically engineered being, with its augmented physical and mental capacity, is indeed, quote, more human than human, and takes on a self-reflexive capacity while setting out to destroy its creators. As the years have progressed, the advancement of animation and computer graphics made sci-fi easy on the eyes and created scenes that left viewers in awe. Beginning with the famous Japanese anime Akira, and in America, computer graphics would become essential to sci-fi films like Tron and The Matrix. Now all the way to computer graphics and animation, they can create a whole film in itself. In the recent science fiction film Ex Machina, we get a dark and philosophical cyberpunk locked room thriller that tangles with the greatest sci-fi puzzle. What does it mean to be human? In Ex Machina, Garland shows us one potential future. It pairs a Frankenstein-esque origin story with a punchier cyberpunk aesthetic. The approach is seductive, enticing the viewer with the promise of sleek and beautiful new technology that promises to change all that we know. The use of animation and computer graphics helps us create an android that is beautiful aesthetically for technology and art. However, at the end of the film, the artificial intelligence turns on its creator and kills him, supporting the thought of robots creating corruption and inducing fear. Its theme centers around artificial intelligence overcoming us, but seduction and romance are a clear representation here of letting a robot become a potential mate. Fast forward to 2018. Movies like Star Wars are still controlling the box office when a new iteration drops. Movies like Blade Runner are still being remade, and even the original is talked about as one of the most influential movies of recent history. We live in a society today where sci-fi can thrive because technology is all around us, and while you are watching this, you are just furthermore confirming this theory. Though we tend to look forward to the next iPhone, or even the potential for an Android servant that can make our life easier, we never look at the negative implications that can come. Cyberpunk gives us this possibility. In the early 1980s, science fiction author Bruce Bethke wrote the story titled Cyberpunk, which would be coined as the birthplace of the term. Bethke told Gardner Deloys of the Isaac Newton Science Fiction Magazine that he made two lists of words, one for technology and one for troublemakers. The social climate of our society for the last 30 years adapts well to this idea of a form of media that foreshadows technological advancements like artificial intelligence and robots that create societal upheaval and corruption. With the invention of smartphones and current Android prototypes in the works, we sit here astonished by the strides we have made in science, but fear wanders through our brain. Fear of humans losing jobs, civil rights, artificial intelligence becoming more conscious of the human brain, and in the possibility of a world where technology cannot be controlled. Cyberpunk puts this possibility into perspective. Blade Runner brought it to the big screen, and video games like Day UX and Detroit Become Human made it interactive by placing us into a futuristic dystopian universe where society is split and tensions between two sides are tight humans, and technology. The message of this genre foreshadows the potential world that comes with rapid improvements in artificial intelligence, which is a society that revolves around its own demise that reignites social disorder and corruption. To quote Jurassic Park, your scientists were so preoccupied with whether or not they could that they never stopped to think if they should. This statement ties closely to the recent cyberpunk game, Detroit Become Human. In this subgenre, the main characters in the beginning are usually very subvert and tend to be very focused on one thing and they don't let their humanity get in the way, most likely because they are android and robotic-like figures like Connor. Connor is a prototype super detective created by the world's leading android manufacturer CyberLife to assist the Detroit City Police Department. During his adventure, he is responsible for stopping deviants, similar to those Nexus 6 androids in Blade Runner. 
Throughout, he is encountered by the owner of Cyberlife and his conscience, who will either give him words of affirmation with how he is handling the outbreak, or shun him if he's not doing a good enough job. But the player has a choice at one point towards the middle of the game, to stray away from his orders as a detective and kill the leader of the Deviant Group, or he can join them. This ties back to the plot of Cyberpunk, androids breaking the mold for how AI should work. Let's look at another example in game series that has created Cyberpunk games for over 20 years, Deux Deux in Latin means a god from a machine. In this Cyberpunk video game series spanning over six different installments in 16 years, the setting and plot remain the same, in which you are in a dystopian universe that explores the world's elite companies and conspiracy theories like the Illuminati, Majestic 12, and Knights Templar as they attempt to control society. According to Deux lore and the Deux Diary, the Illuminati is prevalent with associating with some of the wealthiest characters in the game, and their goal is to take over every civilized institution. The setting in this series is dystopian, and in an environment where there is much opposition. For example, in the latest game Mankind Divided, two kinds of people were split, augmented and non-augmented people, after the Aug accident, which augmented people were controlled for a small amount of time to destroy anyone around them. At some time during the 1990s, the Illuminati began to collaborate with VersaLife, an international company based out of Hong Kong that specializes in bioengineering and nanotechnology, and they began to test advanced genetic therapy treatments on babies. One of those babies is Adam Jensen, the main protagonist throughout the last two installments. Jensen was the only survivor from this experiment and held the key to universal augmentation. In Deux Mankind and Deux Human Revolution, Jensen is a specialized augmented terrorist hunter who is in charge of stopping any sort of threat of the world. His personality is very much subvert as he is a loner and personally likes to take on missions by himself. He also shows very little emotion, unless it is around certain people which are his girlfriend and ex-girlfriends. Overall, he recognizes he has one job, and that is to handle the bad guys. Steven Spielberg introduced us to the science fiction action-adventure film Ready Player One, a partial example of a cyberpunk film. The film is set in 2045, with the world on the brink of chaos and collapse. But the people have found salvation in the Oasis, an expansive virtual reality universe created by the brilliant and eccentric James. When James dies, he leaves his immense fortune to the first person to find a digital Easter egg he has hidden somewhere in the Oasis, sparking a contest that grips the entire world. When an unlikely young hero named Wade decides to join the contest, he is hurtled into a reality-bending treasure hunt through a fantastical universe of mystery, discovery, and danger. Thematically, the film leads towards a more down-to-earth, humanistic view of technology. And Wade is young and idealistic as opposed to jaded and burnt out like your typical tech noir anti-hero. However, the corrupt mega corporation, the dystopia, the virtual world that was used as an escape from reality, are all hallmarks for cyberpunk. Another cyberpunk film is Elysium. This movie takes place in the year of 2154 where humanity is sharply divided between two classes of people. The ultra-rich live in a broad, luxurious space station called Elysium and the rest live in a hard scrabble existence in Earth's ruins. His life hanging in the balance, a man named Max agrees to undertake a dangerous mission that could bring equality to the population, but Secretary Delacourt vows to preserve the pampered lifestyle of Elysium citizens no matter what the cost. Elysium, the space station, looks like a possible future. Its scientific feasibility is questionable, but it's not completely in the realm of fantasy. All the hallmarks of cyberpunk are present which wants to envision a dystopian world around the corner. When we talk about the creations of genre film and video games, we need to consider the time period in which they were made. Why? Well, it speaks a lot about society at that point in time, like what George Orwell did with 1984 and the fear of communism. Science fiction and cyberpunk correlate so nicely because of its platform, which promotes sharing thoughts on what the future holds for the world. Over history, we have seen the thoughts from authors that take us down two different routes where science fiction propels us into a potential utopia or ends up biting us in the ass. But where are we today? That's an interesting question. I believe that when we look at modern day science fiction cyberpunk, we see the potential for technology and where it is taking us. As I look at the setting and environment for the future role-playing game Cyberpunk 2077, which is set to release next year, I see breathtaking human augmentations that seem exhilarating and useful, almost unbeatable military technology and advanced multi-compounded buildings that changed the landscape of future architecture. But, 
Also more believable are the crime rings that profit off of drugs, prostitution, and executions, societal oppression for all the different species rolling through Night City, and government corruption where power and street cred can mean more than any government position. Overall, I see a game that details the upcoming betterment of technology, but sways its attitudes from revolutionary to evil, which is closely correlating with the theme of science fiction temporarily. I say temporarily because science fiction changes rapidly, but as we see it now, cyberpunk and science fiction are foreshadowing the potential world that comes with rapid improvements in artificial intelligence, which is a society that revolves around its own demise and reignites social disorder and corruption. Thank you for watching.